on this last lecture series of the o movements of the ocean, we're going to be talking about tides. Now, tides are basically very extremely long period waves. They even get a special name. They're called transtidal waves. Go back to types of waves videos and you will see what we're talking about. And they're caused by gravitational interactions between the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. And these actually, the only thing that can disrupt these waves or currents which cause tides are the Coriolis effect of the Earth. We'll talk about that later as well. Now, what are tides? Tides are when the water goes higher or lower because it's being pulled by gravity or thrown by inertia. Or at least that's the way that we used to teach what, what causes tides. So let's talk about what they actually look like. So in this picture here, on the top right, top left side, you see both the high and the low tide. How can you tell which one is the high and which one is the low? Look here. In this top picture, I actually see the little mount of sand, which we call the berm, by the way. And it's there because the waves are actually throwing the sand here. And this is as far as they go. And so that's why you would have this berm of sand. They're both throwing sand and eroding whatever's behind that. And so that creates basically an accumulation of sand because that's as far as the waves are pushing it, you know. Uh, so you see that there. And then on this video here, on, on this picture on the bottom you don't see the berm because it's going to be to the left of this picture here. So, on here you see the berm really close to the water level. On the bottom one, you do not see the berm because it's somewhere to the side. Now, what does that mean? Which one is the low tide? Well, obviously, this water is higher on the top. So, this is going to be my high tide and this is going to be my low tide because in the low tide, I'm really far from actually getting to the berm. But on the high tide, I actually touch the berm, which is as, as high as the water will get ever get. And you see the difference in the beach between the two of them. Uh, on this graphical image here, you can actually see how more or less of the continental shelf is actually covered with the water because of the tide. Now, what's actually causing the water level to go higher like this is gravity from, say, the moon or the sun pulling on the oceans towards it, actually causing the water level to go higher, right? And so... Tides are like currents or waves which fluctuate high and low and high and low because of gravitational interaction between the Earth and the Moon. Now, notice by the way that during the high tide, because you're going to raise the water level, you're going to make the water go above the sandbars that were created by the undertow or other currents like that. And so before, you, you, you had to go in between the sandbar to get the rip current. But now, you're going to get a rip current even easier than before. So during the high tides, rip currents are even stronger than during the low tides when they actually have to hit the sandbar or go in an area that is carved by the low undertow currents. And so rip currents are even worse during the high tides. So try to avoid swimming during high tide periods because you're going to have stronger rip currents. Uh, so if you see uh, onshore wind, which tends to cause rip currents, and you see it's a high tide time, it's not a good time to be swimming. It's a good time to catch some waves, but not such a good time to be swimming if you're not a good swimmer. Now, what actually creates these tides? Well, tides are caused by a combination of the gravity of the Earth and the Moon and inertia. Or at least this is the classic way of teaching tides. And when I talked about space, I mentioned this briefly when I talked about the phases of the Moon. Now, the Moon will basically tug on the oceans and pull them towards it creating a bulge of water, as you can see in both these pictures, which creates a high tide on the side of the Earth that's facing the Moon. The same thing will happen on the side of the Earth that's facing the Sun, which explains why you have these two bulges, right? Well, not quite. We're going to talk about when it gets tricky in a second. But then you also have the low tide. The low tide is the areas in the middle where the water is actually getting stretched to actually head towards the, the, the bulges. And so water is stretched up on the middle and then the, the sides actually face the moon or the sun gets the bulge. Now, what that doesn't make sense is think about, think about the new moon, for example. Let's say that you have the moon over here, and then you have far away, of course, not to scale, the sun is going to be here. Now, in this case, you go to, of course, you, you get why well, you get a tidal bulge on this side, because gravity is going to be pu pulling towards here, and you're going to get a tidal bulge. But why the hell would you get a tidal bulge on the other side? And that's where it gets tricky, right? Uh, there just still is a tidal bulge on the other side. Now, the theory was, or at least that's how people used to teach, that inertia is what's causing the second tidal bulge, or the idea that because the Earth is spinning very fast, one side is pulled by the, by the moon or the sun, or both, 
the other side is thrown by the rotational action of the earth so as the earth spins one side gets thrown and that's what creates the, a second tidal bulge imagine Ben that the, because the earth is spinning this is the bulge that's being created because of the of the centrifugal force not the gravitational force that's the old idea but there's some problems with this way of looking at tides okay and we're going to talk about that after we talk about tidal variations and then I'm going to provide you a solution for this problem, all right? Uh, for the problems in which I'm going to raise. Okay, let's, let's first of all focus on what actually means to be in a high tide or low tide and how that changes throughout the days. Now, there are actually supposed to be two high tides and two low tides normally per day. How does, what does that make any sense? So, let's say, for example, that the top of my hat, uh, and you are the moon right now, and you're looking at my hat in the video, now, the side that's looking at you is going to experience a high tide because the water is being pulled towards you because you're the moon, right? The side be behind the hat also experiences a high tide because of inertia, or supposedly. The sides of the side of the hat experience low tide because they're not facing the moon. But the problem is that the earth is spinning at the same time, so six hours later, the front of the hat is now facing away from you, and so is the back of the hat. The sides of the hat is now facing towards you. They are experiencing a high tide. The front and the back are experiencing low tides. Six hours later, the earth is a nut, makes another turn like this. And now the back and the front are again experiencing high tides. But the sides are again experiencing low tides. Six hours later, again the back and the front are experiencing low tides. Uh, and the, the sides are experiencing high tides. So throughout the day, because the earth is spinning, you're going to have a difference in who receives the high and a low tide. So typically you would see two high tides per day or two low tides a day. Again, remember, this would be a high tide and six hours later though, that piece of the earth will be, will be here. So six hours later, I will be here, experience a low tide. And another six hours later, the same piece will be here again, experience a high tide. Six hours later, be here again, experience a low tide. And six hours later, it's back where it started, experiencing a high tide. And so that explains why you would technically have two high tides and two low tides every day. Now, the other thing that's happening here is that at the same time the Earth is spinning, the moon is going around the Earth. So remember that. That the moon, at the same time the Earth is spinning, is go going around the Earth. Now, it will take, if you remember anything about the space lecture, 28 days for the moon to complete one of these cycles around the Earth. But that means that in one day, it's going to go 1 28th of the journey around the Earth. So if you were to get this big circle that the moon does around the Earth and split in 28 pieces, in one day, the moon will do that, man, that much. So let's say this much. That means that 12 hours later, after the Earth's spin, you are not at a high tide because the high tide is no longer here. It's going to be somewhere here because the moon moved a little bit in the same amount of time it took you to go around in circles. We're going to talk about this again in class with the model so you can get what I'm talking about. But what I'm trying to say here is that the high tide today is not going to come at the same time as the high tide tomorrow. The same way that the moon rise today does not come at the same time as the moon rise tomorrow. Now if you remember from talking about, when we talk about the video for, for uh, space, we talked about that every day is 50 minutes later so that means that if I was because it basically if you get 24 hours and divide by 28 that's 50 you're gonna see that's 50 minutes there and so that means that every day the moon rises 50 minutes later than the day before which means every day the high tide is gonna happen uh, 50 minutes later than the day before by the way the high tide usually happens six hours after the moon rise because remember the moon rises when uh, it's at the horizon which means it's gonna be not in, on top of you, but to the side of you. And so that's where you're going to get a, the, the, the low tide. So when the moon is right on top of the sky, that's where you're going to get the high tide. By the way, that will happen whether or not you can see the moon. So if it's a new moon, it's still up there in the, on top of the sky. You're still going to have the high tide. So that is how tides work. So you're supposed to get two high tides and two light tides a day. And you're supposed to get... 50 minutes later each day. So if, it's, if it came at 9.30 today, the high tide comes tomorrow at 10.40. If it came at 10.40 today, it will come tomorrow at 11.30 and so forth. All right? So that's tidal variations throughout the thing. 
another thing that varies with tides, remember that as the moon is moving around, it's also moving in relationship to the earth. Let's talk about that. It, when the moon is in a position that is lined up with the sun, in other words, the moon and the sun are both kind of pulling in the same direction, or they're lined up with each other, almost like a straight line. That means you have the combined gravitational effect of the moon and the gravitational effect of the sun to create a tidal bulge. Now, uh, and you, you can see that happening in the bottom here, okay? So you see how the moon and the sun is both working together to create a tidal bulge, which means the tidal bulge created by the sun, featuring yellow, and the tidal bulge created by the moon, featuring blue, will combine to make a very, very large tidal bulge, which is called a spring tide, all right? Now, why is it called a spring tide? Because whenever you have spring tides, okay, which will happen, by the way, look at here on the right side so you can check the phase of the moon. This will happen during the new moon or during the full moon. That's when the moons are lined up. The, the, the earth, the moon, and the sun are all lined up. Remember, even if the moon is in the other side, you're still going to have two tidal bulges. One because of the sun, one because of the moon. is still more stretching, so it's still going to have more tidal, a bigger tidal bulge. So, it's called spring tide because the tidal bulges are going to be very, very big, which means the high tide is going to be very high and the low tide is going to be very low. So you're going to be high tide all the way up there, low tide all the way up here, and there's a very big difference between the high tide and the low tide. So it springs forth all the way to that, all the way down here. It's like the tide is going really, really springy to really, really uncoiled. So that's why we call it spring tide because I think of a spring going, you know? springing out about and that happens because the tidal bulges of the sun and the moon are combining now whenever you get the moon and the sun making a nine degree angle like this you're going to have the tidal bulge of the sun yellow so now you're going to do the the neap tides okay so that, that's this drawing over here and you see that the the solar tide and the lunar tides are not combining and so you're going to have the tidal bulges are not going to be as intense and you can see that that will happen during the third quarter or first quarter moons, right? When the sun and the moon are in a 90 degree angle with each other. Now, in between, of course, you're going to get something in between, right? So, what happens in doing these tides is that the, the high tide is going to be somewhere here, so not as high as the other one was, and the low tide is going to be somewhere here, and the difference between the two of them are not so big. So, so like, it's not a very strong tide, so we call it the neap tide. So check out the difference between a high tide doing uh, a spring tide and a light high tide doing a low tide. You see how there's a big difference. The, the high tide doing a spring tide, which happens during the full moon or new moon, is much larger than the high tide doing the, the neap tide, which happens during the first quarter or third quarter moons. Same thing is about the low tide. The low tide is also going to be lower doing that because the, the, the stretching in the middle it's going to be a lot worse here when you don't have the solar tide separate from the, from the lunar tide. And also notice that the difference between high tides and low tides is going to be different as well. So this red line is what we call the spring tide, and then the green line is what we call the neap tides. All right? And then the red light what will happen during the, the, the new moon and the full moon, and then the neap tide will happen during the first quarter and third quarter moons. All right? Now... On the next video, we're going to talk about why different places experience different tides of different intensities and how come this whole idea of inertia and gravity causing tides doesn't really make sense. We'll talk about that in the next video. See you guys then.